Hey, what's up, Transformers fans? Welcome once again to another Graham Seek Reviews. And this time we have War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer Deluxe figure. It's part of the Wave 4 from the Kingdom series. One of the last figures from the War for Cybertron trilogy. And as we all know, Slammer is part of Metroplex's um, defense team. So he is originally just a tank that transforms into a tower in his defense mode as well. So he can also use that as a fist weapon in the G1 toy. As you can see here with the new design for Slammer in his robot form, he's got really nice details like the Autobot logo, the new head sculpt, which kind of looks like the front of the alt mode of Ultra Magnus in the Siege line. As you can see the nice details of the tank tracks as well and some like missile pods or missile launchers as a weapon. So basically he's also a weaponizer this time from the Kingdom line and in order for him to transform you have to take him apart of course like a parts forming robot and you can attach his ports into any part of the other robots as well and turn him and use him as a weapon here i prefer the nozzle of his um, tank uh, attached in the back like that uh, in his backpack articulation wise his head is on a ball joint peg of course his arms rotate and also move outwards you can also detach the arms from the shoulder as he is a weaponizer uh, it doesn't have any wrist rotation and his wrist is pretty much simplified as a weapon he's got waist rotation of course and his legs move outwards forwards backwards and his knees also fold he's got a bit of ankle tilting on the side it's got thigh uh, rotation as well and a slight ab crunching because of the his part in the middle of his chest so now let's try to transform him by disassembling him first we take out the pieces take them apart remove the arms remove the shoulders and then remove the legs as well this part right, right leg as well and as for this middle or lower part of the torso you really don't have to remove it it stays there then you remove the backpack where the tank treads are disassemble this part and the middle section will be reverse once you transform him into his or use him as part of the tank underneath you can also attach the threads together like this and attach this small part here that would look like a chainsaw as a weapon and as for the torso um first things first you don't really have you just have to rotate the head so as to not it doesn't show once you transform him into his tank and for the lower torso just rotate it like this so it doesn't get in the way underneath or give some clearance for him to roll then you attach the tank treads on the side like this make sure that the waist doesn't get in the way or doesn't touch so as to it has enough space for it to be there and then with the legs you fold out this part of the feet and fold in the thigh inwards fold it like this fold out the, uh, the feet once again and this middle section here you would attach it facing this way so first we remove the, the threads once again attach it like this then bring in the other part of the threads there you go then you use this part of the leg the left leg and attach it on the side so it's easier if you build them like this and then use the shoulder part that will be attached in the middle part and back part of the tank as well facing like facing this way make sure that the connecting piece for the arm is angled upwards like that and then this part would be the other side of the tank 
see here we have the main body tank now we have to work on the turret which is the arms and it's too bad you can't attach them together but yeah there's no piece connecting them together unless you attach them to this part of the shoulder once again and the stoop millimeter peg hole will be held by this little piece here that would also connect the nozzle but it doesn't really fit that well and here's the tank nozzle and we have our Autobot City tank which is part of Metroplex's um, defense system the transformers will return he doesn't precisely look like one of those modern battle tanks, but the angle and the design is pretty much close to a mix and match of modern day tanks. So it's got nice details when it comes to the paint applications and the body color, and as well as the tank treads, which is well. And underneath, there's a, there are wheels here that you can use so it can roll nicely, as you can see here. As for the turret, it's a bit um, unstable as you can see here you can only look up and down but you can't really rotate it because it breaks apart once you're trying to, to turn it or twist it because it doesn't hold each other together when it comes to the both arms see here so it's just gonna be stationary as it is And here is Warpath, another Autobot tank for size comparison. As you can see, he's almost the same size of that of Warpath, except Warpath is a bit more wider than, of course, Slammer. But Slammer's got a bigger nozzle, which in turn doesn't really fit the blast effects, unlike with um, Warpath here. Where he can easily put the blast effects on his nozzle but with slammer the nozzle is too big none of those five millimeter port blasters fit so it's very loose it doesn't work and with regards to the back part i'm not sure if you can also attach him and use him as a weapon for metroplex or like attach him in his fist as well like in the g1 toy so yeah but it's got nice design I just wish they've made this part a bit more like stable. So now let's try to transform him back to his robot mode by disassembling him once again. And it's easier that way once you transform him back from robot and back to alt form and then alt form back to robot. So we're gonna take him apart once again. Make sure that the centerpiece, which is part of the tracks and the backpack, would be facing the opposite this and then the torso so you can also bring this down rotate the head once again rotate the waist attach the legs make sure that this is your left leg attach it like this then the ankle rocking would be facing on the side instead of the it, inner thighs attach the other leg which is the right leg facing this way let me adjust my camera and then attach the shoulders shoulders will be facing this way with the stripes in front and the other sh other part of the shoulder as well then attach the arms which would be the right arm here and then the left arm here see the back this is part of the piece of the backpack that should be showing or angled this way and then for the tank treads or the small piece you can also attach underneath here and the tank treads would be attached facing this way so as to hide it doesn't show much at the back the other thread as well and there 
and attach the nozzle either way, left or right. And here we have Slammer back again in his robot mode. Now as for the blast effects, you can only attach him facing the opposite way because of his 5mm pegs on his arms like this, you can see. Because the other end of it is much smaller and doesn't fit. And as for the tank's nozzle, that really doesn't fit well. I don't know. It's a missed opportunity on that one. Why you guys in Hasbro didn't think this over? That the tank nozzle doesn't really fit well when it comes to the blast effects. You can also use other accessories from other robots. Like this one is a shield from Huffer, which I prefer. It's like he's, like he's on a defense mode or a guardian or something of the Autobot City. And aside from that, we all know he's a weaponizer. So you can attach him anywhere. And you can transform him into various forms or mode depending on what you prefer. So here he is with um, Six Gun, which is his teammate with Metroplex, along with other War for Cybertron weaponizers like Cog and Brunt from Tripticon. So these are all deluxe figures from the War for Cybertron series. And we also have Rorichi, which is a sidekick of Black Zarek, and Fast Track, sidekick of Scorponok. Let me just straighten up his arms. So yep, these are all weaponizers. And also we have some modulators as well, which are all deluxe figures as well. For size comparison, here's Grease Pete and Airwave, along with a Centurion Centurion Droid, which is a silver color of Brunt, and it's also a Generation Select figure, and very limited in numbers, very hard to find as well. And here he is with the Autobot City Commander, which is Ultra Magnus, and Rodimus Prime, of course, their new commander. And so with that concludes our review of War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer Deluxe Figure from Wave 4. And with the conclusion of the War for Cybertron trilogy in Netflix, here's hoping the next line of Transformers toys will be exciting as it is with this series. And I plan to continue with the 86 Studio series as well for more upcoming figures. And as well as the upcoming Transformers new line which is the Legacy. I want to thank you all for those who subscribed to my channel and enjoyed my video toy reviews. Until the next video review, have fun collecting and hunting Transformers toys till all are one.